Hey everybody, and welcome to another Excel APA tutorial. In this one, we are updating the factorial two by two line graph tutorial from five years ago. This is the second part to the bar graph tutorial that would have come out um, either a week or so ago. It came out before this one. And we're gonna be using uh, similar data, uh, the same data actually, from that video. In this video, as you can see here, we are just going to create a new updated, because look at that, 720p, ugh, can't see anything. So I've gotten comments about updating it, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This was done on Excel 2016, now we're doing it on Excel uh, MS Office 365, so this is constantly updated, so this is great. Now you can see here that I've got this already titled because I saved the bar graph one with the bar graph in it, and we've got now the data. I just deleted the bar graph so we can make a line graph. These files are linked in the descriptions, so you can download these and put in your own labels, your own data for a two by two, or maybe adding a three by three, whatever. And then the graph will be all made for you in APA style. That's the added value that I am adding to this, these videos. The graph is made for you. So you're welcome, the folks of you out there who are like, I have no idea how to do this, Dr. Swan. Can you help me? Graph is already made. It looks like it needs to be in APA style. Shh, don't tell your teacher. Anyways, let's go ahead and make the line graph. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this data very briefly, and then we'll jump into how to format this in case you wanna learn how to do it on your own and not just use the file to make the graph. All right, so first, first things first, let's talk about this data. We've got men and women and a math or confidence building condition. This was a stereotype threat uh, kind of study where they had people either in uh, math skills, where they just practice their math skills, or they had some confidence building exercises here to increase their confidence in working with math. These are their scores, the dependent variable on a statistics exam out of 100. And you can see, so statistics exam, pretty difficult um, for everyone. <laughs> so um, we've got it divided by uh, two by two here, men and women as gender, and then what condition they were in and how well they did. Down here in the same structure, we have the standard errors. We're going to add our standard error bars to our line graph to make it nice and pretty and APA style so people can tell just by looking at the graph whether or not there were any significant differences. That's the idea with the error bars. And you can see that they're quite similar for, they're the same for men and they're the same for women. And we'll go ahead and explore that at the very end of this graph creation. Okay, so let's go ahead and select this three by three area. Uh, this, this dead cell here doesn't really matter. It's gonna ignore this dead cell, this empty cell, and it's gonna use what's written here to make our graph. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna go up to insert, we are going to go to line graph. If the Yeah, there you go. There's the tooltip. It shows line. I, I hope that comes through in the video. Uh, and then we have several kinds of lines, graphs here. We can do this line graph, which is a normal line, a stacked line for different kinds of variables, 100% stacked line, which gives us our line and then a line for 100%. Line with markers or a stack line with markers. So we're gonna go ahead and um, use the line with markers. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. Although, let me see, did I use, I did use line with markers um, in the last one. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that one. So line with markers is gonna pull up art and it's gonna put dots. Now you can do line without markers and then add your dots in afterward. That's totally fine too. Let's go ahead and make this a lot bigger than um, it really needs to be. So everyone can see it. We'll leave a space over here for the options menus to pop up. All right, so this is what uh, Excel came up with by default. We're gonna be making changes here on the graph, but then also using this add charts element dropdown menu, which comes with all of these different things right here, axes all the way, trend line, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and start making changes to this line graph. By default, it uses the blue and orange color scheme. You can change this color scheme any way that you want. So first things first, let's get rid of the chart title. Two ways to do it. You can either hit delete or backspace or go up to chart title, um, chart, uh, chart element, excuse me, and chart title, and then click on none and it, it goes away. Now there is an interesting bug here that I discovered recording the bar chart one is the chart title, the, the check mark does not go over none even though it doesn't exist. So if it's not on the chart, you're free to move on. Let's go ahead and do that. Next thing I wanna do is mess with my legend here. So the legend is men, blue, women, uh, orange. However, I want gender down on the bottom here like I did on the bar graph. So I'm gonna go up to switch row and column. Now you can change it over here and you can put men and women and just like rejigger this, uh, th these four cell uh, data. Um, but this is just easier to set it up how you wanted to and then just use this button to go back and forth, right? So if I just keep clicking this back and forth, it just moves it back and forth. So I want men and women down on the x-axis and I want my lines to represent. And you can see the lines change very briefly for where they go. I wanna go ahead and do one more click. There we go. <laughs> nope, one more click. There we go, men and women there, and then our lines represent the conditions, uh, the, the math conditions, I suppose, right? Our manipulation. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, you can keep your, your legend down here. There's really no rule about where legends need to go, bottom, right, left, top. I like putting it at the top because there is no chart title, so where what better place to put my uh, legend than the top? So go ahead and do that. So instead of down at the bottom where my axis label is gonna go, gender, right? I'll put it at the top so we can do that. 
So let's uh, go ahead and just modify this briefly and put in our font as Arial because Ar oh, I did that again. Arial Ar Ar uh, Arial is a very good font for readability across modalities. So it's good because it's a sans serif font, so it doesn't have the extra serifs at the end of letters to make it more difficult to read. It makes it less fancy, of course. Basic. Eh, it's the Google default. Arial is the Google default. Uh, and the kerning uh, between letters is spaced out enough to where you can detect all of the different letters as opposed to Aptos uh, Narrow, which is what I have here. I'm also going to increase the font size to 14, so um, it's readable from distances, okay? No matter how small I make this graph on like a poster uh, or something or in a manuscript, it's going to clearly see, you're going to clearly see math skills and confidence building are these colors. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's my legend done. Let's go ahead and get rid of these vertical, or excuse me, horizontal uh, grid lines because your grid lines make things look messy. So let's go back to chart design and click on grid lines. And check means it's on. Uncheck means it's off. So you can see here these three are off. Unchecked is uh, checked is off. Now we have that if we go to back there and you can see all of them are off. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and modify the uh, X axis. Let's double click on that to bring up our axis options here. We don't really need to do anything in any of these uh, sizing uh, alignment. Um, we don't really need to do anything with the uh, text effects. What I really want to do is change the color of the axis itself. So it's this light shade of gray. Let's make this stark and stand out as a uh, nice thick black line at one point font. Let's go ahead and do that. So men and women um, are underneath the line and the Y axis then goes uh, upward. OK, so that's the only thing I want to change as far as the axis goes. But while I have this selected, let's go ahead to home so we can change the font and the font size. Arial 14. So it makes men and women larger. Last thing I need to do for this chart is to add the axis title. OK, and we are going to do primary horizontal. It's going to pop that element here. Click on this, highlight it, you know, double, triple click to get the whole thing. And we're going to put the word gender in and we're going to highlight it again to make sure that when we change this to Arial and 14 or 16, if you prefer, that it is nice and big. So we click on that. It moved the Y axis up just a little bit to smudge it in there so it fits. There we go. There's my Y or I constantly do that. There's my X axis all done. Next thing we need to do is the Y axis. So I'm going to double click on here and it'll bring up my axis options format uh, format access. And um, we can add the actual axis vertical line in two ways. We can change the color, which tells Excel that like I want it I want it to see. So right now you can see that it's a uh, uh, like this darker gray. And I don't really want that to be a darker gray. The other way to show the axis line is to go to tick marks and change our tick marks from on major type from none to inside, outside or cross. I typically do outside and watch when I do outside. So I did it the other way in the other video. When I do it on outside, it added the line, right? But it's this dark gray. Now it kind of looks black against this white, but if we double click on that, we can make sure that if we go to here that it is black and it did, it made it black. And now I'm going to do, oops, that's not what I want. I will share it later, Dropbox. <laughs> and one point font to make it nice and thick and it matches this down here, right? These two look ooh, so nice together. Um, let's see. Oh, back to this. We need to go back to that. So we're done with uh, changing it. The last thing I want to do is axis options because the test is out of 100, but my scale only goes up to 90 here. So what I want to do is I want to manually change this to 100. OK, and then I'm going to hit enter. Now, this this uh, redo button or undo button reset became active because I could tell Excel to go back to 90 um, because that's what it thinks it wants to do. Now, you can do change your major or minor units. So 10 is what it's defaulting to, but I can change this to every 15, every 20, every 25, and it will change this. So if I change this to every 20, you'll see 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100, right? Boom, it just gets rid of, they, they actually stayed in the same place. I love that, right? Love that for us, right? And then now, so we'll leave it as the every 10s and go uh, in that way, right? So I think that looks pretty good. The last thing we want to do is change the, uh, while the axis is selected, change it to Arial, and then change it to 14 font. It smudged the lines over. That's wonderful. Now, we can't leave it just yet, so it's not changing this one, but we need to add our label. So we click on this. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't click. Uh, click on the add charge element, chart element, and axis titles, primary vertical, to throw it in here, smudged everything over. And we are going to put in statistics. St statistics. There we go. Exam. Oh, God. I hate writing on camera. <laughs> out of 100. There we go. Boom. You don't have to add the out of 100. I just I like making my graphs as um, explicit as possible. So let's grab that and make sure that this is Arial and then 14. Look at that. Wonderful. There's our APA graph. Oh, but it's missing one important element. It is missing error bars. It is missing error bars. So we need to change that. We need to make sure We've got some error bars in here. Oh, look at that. We've got our standard errors all ready to go. Wonderful. So let's go ahead and click on the graph, anywhere on the graph, to bring up the chart design menu. And then we're going to go to add chart element. And we're going to go down to error bars. 
we have options here to none, standard error, percentage, standard deviation. We don't want to do any of those. We just want to go to more error bar options. So look on the, uh, so when I do that, look over here and watch it change to our error bar options. Oh, but it asks us because we have technically two data series. It asks us which one we want to do because rather than doing all of the error bars at once, it's making sure Excel is making sure that you only do a little bit at a time per series. So here we're going to do math skills, confidence building. We're going to do it once for uh, men and women. And then we're going to do confidence building for men and women. If we had it opposite where the lines were gender, this would say men and this would say women. But because I have switched the rows and columns, we're going to do the data series by math skills and confidence building. So we're going to go down C and down D, down column C, down column, column D. And we're going to use these two values and then these two values, because this is the 3.43 is the male value or man value. And the 3.67 is the woman value. OK, and the same thing for confidence building. So we're going to go downward. We're going to do this one at a time. You, you can't do both at the same time. So we're going to do math skills. It adds error bars to math skills. By default, they come in as this dark gray value. And they're like, I don't know, 10, uh, positive 10 and, and minus 10. Of course, we're going to have to change that. So we're going to change these to black. So they stand out against any other colors. They're starker. Although, as you'll notice here, the error bar goes behind the line along this vertical element here. So that's a little way to um, keep it less messy, we'll say. But you can also clearly see an overlap. So that one is going to be um, interesting to indicate on your graph, right? The next thing we have to do is go to the error bar options. OK, so um, you have three options that you got to deal with. I like to leave these on by default because they just make the most sense. So having both the plus and minus directions and then also having the cap on them. These are absolutely dealer's choice here. You can do whatever you'd like, but we need to change our error amount, right? So fixed value is 10 right here. We don't want that. We also don't want percentage, standard deviations or any kind of calculated standard error because we already have that information here. We don't need Excel to be calculating standard errors from here. It's, it's probably incorrect. It's not going to come up with 3.43 or 3.67. So we go to custom and then we hit specify value. It brings up this custom error bars dialog box and it defaults it to one positive and one negative. We're going to change this. Um, this button here uh, wants us to choose the value from the spreadsheet. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to choose the value from the spreadsheet. Now, it's important that since we are doing, uh, let me move this down so you can see. Let's move this over here. Um, we are doing math skills, right? We go down. So we've got men math skills here and women math skills here. So we're not going across. We're going down. So we've got C10 and C11. And you can um, grab this value and put it into the negative one any way you want to. You can copy and paste it down in here. You can hit tab to highlight this negative one and put it in here. Uh, just make sure you get rid of that negative one, that one in curly equals curly brackets one because uh, Excel is only expecting one equal sign here, right? Now, the graph won't uh, update from the one value until you hit OK. So let's go ahead and do that. And look at that. We have our error bars there. Now we need to do it another time. So I don't have error bars yet for my um, confidence building line. So I'm going to go ahead and go uh, click off that so I get off the blue error bars, the blue line error bars. I'm going to go back to the graph, chart design, add chart elements, error bars, more error bar options confidence building now, right? So that's what we're going to do. Confidence building. So we're going to click OK to bring up and it's going to insert those again at a default of 10. So we're going to go through the same setup. We've got our paint bucket options open here. Let's make this black to be starker against uh, the white backdrop. Now we got to change the values. So we're going to go to these bars here, both uh, directions, cap on my end style. And then now we go down to custom, click on that, specify value. Now we're going to go down the confidence building column. So these two columns, D10 and D11. I'm going to hit tab to highlight the negative value, and then we're going to do click and drag against those two to have you want to make sure that the flashing dashed lines are over the cells that you want. You click OK, and there you go. We're going to click off the graph or you know click anywhere on the graph or off the graph. And now you can see we've got our error bars on here. And this is an interesting one here. These two end caps uh, are overlapping just a little bit. So you can see that it's making like this equal sign, which I think is kind of funny. Um, so you can see there's a little bit overlap right here, as opposed to this one where there's no overlap. So in for women, confidence building was more important for their scores rather than math skills. So building their confidence to reduce the stereotype threat rather than activating the stereotype threat. Whereas for men, it really didn't matter. And there you go. You have a little interaction going. And the line graph shows you the interaction quite a bit better than the bar graph does. Not saying that the bar graph in the two by two doesn't show you an interaction. You just look at the bar heights and you kind of have to guess from there. But the line graph really shows you the difference here. Now, on the lines themselves, you can go ahead and change the um, markers. If you want to change the markers, you can change the markers to any of the built in. So by default, it's circles, but I can change those to squares and write math is now blue squares and confidence building is orange circles. So you can do whatever you want there. That's not 
absolutely necessary. The end caps don't even have to be there. You can get rid of the end caps. If I click on those uh, again, we can go to marker and we can go to marker options and we can click on none. And there you go. There's no end caps now and the legend doesn't have the marker in it. So however you want to however you want to present your line graph is absolutely up to you. All right. And that is oh, let me go ahead and, and I'm just going to leave. No, you know what? I'm not going to leave it there. Let's let's put the uh, markers back on. <laughs> let's put it back to circles built in. Let's do circles. There we go. All right. So there you go. That is a two by two line graph APA style in Excel. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave those in the comment section down below. Stay tuned for the final update Excel video for scatter plots. That's going to be in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.